I don't know how to put this, but I'm kind of a big deal. Good afternoon, this is Dr. Bones Live, and today my guest is the Disappear Band. Welcome to the show. Hi, how are you? Very good, how about yourself? Pretty good. Pretty good? Uh, <laughs> having a, a, a little bit of a rainstorm here. Oh, really, so, eh? Yeah. Uh, a perfect way to ruin, ruin our summer, our sunny, lovely, sunny summer, uh, went away. <laughs> <laughs> We're having a lot of thunderstorms and, and rain. It's uh, highly atypical for this for this time of the year. Really? Because we've been getting the same thing here. Because normally we usually have a hot, hot summer, but it's been a really cold summer. Like it's not unusual temperatures. So yeah. what's <laughs> let's get started here. Um, uh, disappear. I just wh- where did you come up with that name? Because it, it's kind of a unique one. Sonic Youth. Sonic. Sonic. Oh. I, I didn't even need, I wouldn't even have thought of that. That's <laughs> <laughs> and my huge Sonic it Youth. Was, it was. Go ahead. Yeah, it's 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 one of my my favorite bands. Uh, the Goo album is one of my uh, one of my top ten albums of all time. So that song was was an easy choice for for naming a band. You know what? I didn't. Uh, even... The trouble was. Go ahead. The trouble was is that uh, there's already a, a band named uh, Disappear, but they play some sort of post hardcore. Uh, I, I can't, I can't, I, I haven't listened to them even. Uh, <laughs> but that was a, a little bit of a challenge, uh, trying to make your name known oh, when there's another band around. Oh, absolutely. I mean. Uh... That actually happened uh, between, uh, well, the UK slash US band Bush. But when they came to Canada, there was actually a band named Bush already. So in Canada, their CD had to be marketed as Bush X. So, <laughs> yeah, so, so that, that happens. This was years ago, but that does happen. And I should have put that together because I'm a huge Sonic Youth fan myself. And for one of my uh, top ten albums uh, by them, I really like Goo, but I would have to go with either uh, Dirty or Daydream Nation. Yeah, Dirty. Yeah, they're both they're both uh, good albums. So, uh, but I, I I keep my choice. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, no 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 no, that that that's just my pick. <laughs> so um, the the music you play in general, because you sent me an EP not too long ago. And I really liked it just because there's there's not there's not tons of vocals, but you've got a uh, unique uh, kind of distortion uh, distortion sound all the way through. But it sounds so good, and is I'm kind of wondering where you kind of came up with the idea where you kind of decided, you know, I'm gonna do more more instrumentals and a little bit of vocals as opposed to we'll call it your generic kind of verse chorus verse. Uh, I can't I can't do I can't do normal music. I can't <laughs> I can't write it. According to the structure, uh, I, I can't. I, I really can't. <laughs> I used to when I, when I was younger, but, but no, I can't. Uh, my my way of looking at it is that it's completely open. It, you can do whatever you want. There's always someone who who's going to to like it. Uh, and and the, the first thing, the the, mer- the first major thing that I noticed was that. Um, this was probably the the first album that didn't make me puke after a few weeks, so it was a good sign. <laughs> that the songs were good because <laughs> it's already happened. I made two or three albums, and after after a while, I, I listened to them, and they were atrocious. So uh, I disowned them. It's like I never wrote them. I I don't know where I where I put the files. I don't care about them. But this one was was a different affair. Uh, it has a, it had a lot of um, personal stuff of my life put into it, so uh, it ended up pleasing a lot of people, including myself. Oh, well, I'm glad you decided to go this one. I mean, I haven't heard of your previous stuff, but that's uh, really interesting because uh, usually, obviously, bands good, move. Good, good. <laughs> good, 
<laughs> so obviously bands move on uh, from what they've done in the past and kind of change, but I, I've never heard of that. <laughs> I've never heard it put the way you put it. Ah, uh, yeah, it just makes you want to throw off. Yeah. <laughs> critical of the stuff I write uh, that, that can be a challenge for some people but to me it's the way I, I work I, I don't care very much about technical aspects uh, but the writing process the songs must be perfect to me to me the rest is, is kind of secondary uh, I don't give it much importance well, I know, but that's the way it's it's supposed to be. I mean, when you're writing the music initially, you know, you're, you're writing it, uh, you're writing it for yourself, and you want it to sound the way you want to sound because otherwise, it's not your music. It's just kind of a bit of you and something else. So it's it's definitely a good way of going about it. Yeah, yeah, it's it's, it's pretty pretty much the depth. Um, also, I, I have a very unorthodox way of of, of putting my music together. Um, I make several songs, but then I, I don't know if, if this is a correct term, I dismember them. Uh, one is the head, the other is the arms, and then I assemble it together in a new entity uh, some, of some sort. Uh, all these songs were very, very different in the beginning. Uh, but I destroy everything and rebuild it. And then it, it, it ends up uh, sounding like this. Uh, a little bit out. It's, it's almost like outsider music or outsider art. Uh, not everyone gets it, but those who do like it, so it's good for me. Well, you know what? I <clears throat> personally, when I when I first listened to it, I really appreciated it because it was a lot different from the stuff uh, I put before and stuff I've been. Uh, uh, listen to and picking up and playing the show itself. So this really caught caught my ear like right away, just because I just love the 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 deep sound to it and just uh, the uniqueness of it. And uh, just telling me how you put together that's that just completely <laughs> that's completely off the wall. But man, it works well. <laughs> so why change <laughs> yeah, it, right? I don't, I don't know. I, I avoid I avoid uh, doing publicly public criticism of my music, but. That's it, how it works for me. Uh, I think David Bowie used to do that with lyrics. Uh, you write words, then shuffle them up and come up with lyrics. I do the same with, with riffs, songs, drum beats, whatever. I I try to do something new. Um, not going by that old book of doing the same stuff for, over and over again. Um, that's... So so far so good. Well, yeah. <laughs> I think of it. Well, you know, it's it's interesting, but it's got to be. I would think it's got to be a little difficult for you at the same time uh, to keep kind of turning up something like completely new and different. Because I mean, it it makes for it makes for a great album, but it just it's you gotta have to put a lot of work into it. I mean, it's got to be frustrating at times, I would imagine. Oh, you have no idea. <laughs> have no idea. <laughs> this one took took uh, two years. Oh Two wow! Years. From the first riff I recorded to the final product, it's it's daunting. It's a daunting process. Oh. Uh, but but now I'm more uh, used to to the process. Uh, I'm more. I don't know. I don't know the the term. I'm more concentrated on on it. Okay. Well, no. uh, not letting life affect me much. And just record. Well, Don't I'm, overthink it. Oh, well, that's the, no, that's a good way of putting it. I mean, it's you're right because uh, now that you've done it for a while, now you've, you've you're right. You've adapted to the sound and you've adapted to what you're doing. So uh, it's kind of like practice makes perfect, right? Once you got something down, you know where you're going. It makes the process just not tons faster, but a little bit faster because at least you know you've got somewhat of a direction now of which way you're going to go with it. Yeah, but but the the future direction is is completely unknown. Uh, I don't know where where I, I will be in in two years. I, I'm already recording stuff, so so it's it's a little bit different. Uh, I'm always discovering new stuff to do in the studio. Oh, and that... having your own studio is is a, a helpful tool to do that to be free. 
uh, and do that experimentation. It's important, but it's faster now. It's, it's faster. Absolutely, and now like, I would I would think yeah, having your own studio that's that's got that's gonna be a, a great a amazing thing to have to yourself because you already got all the freedom and you don't you're not rushed. You have pretty much all the time you, that you want or need for a specific song or album. Uh, not exactly when, when you have a job, <laughs> that that freedom is kind of conditioned. Uh, you have twelve hours a day that you dedicate yourself to, to your job, and you come home, you have your family. So I don't have all the time I want. I have all the time I need, maybe. Okay, no, fair enough. Uh, <laughs> no, no, I mean most most musicians. Go ahead. But I wish I wish I had more time. I wish I, I had all full time in the world so so that I, I can do perfect songs, uh, perfect beats, uh, perfect riffs. But I uh, I don't, and I, and I think most musicians don't too. Well, they, and they get tired sooner or later. Well, that's right. I mean, they, they do a lot. Most musicians do have another job just because, you know, like at this point, uh, stage in time, you can't survive on that just alone. It'd be nice, but <laughs> no, it's nice to have something to fall back on. Yeah, it's pretty much it. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, but, but jobs and jobs end up killing some, some part of the, the creativity. Uh, I don't know, but maybe give give some inspiration as some sort some sort of compensation for dedicating yourself to to someone and giving giving them your work. Right. Uh, that affects you too, and that reflects itself on the art created. So it's not not a really really bad thing, but it's not great either. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, it's it's an in between, and uh, you know whatever works is gonna have to work, and you gotta kind of deal with what you got, right? Yeah. So uh, we're gonna uh, go ahead. Uh, I was just gonna say that um, maybe that's the reason why we're having a, a big indie. I don't like the, the term. I prefer the, the term independent uh, music scene. It's growing. Because of that, and no one gets the, the success they, they had in the 80s, in the 90s. And you end up working your job, making music, playing some gigs, and that's it. No, you're absolutely right. The, the independent scene is, is, being, is becoming bigger and bigger, and, you know, and it's literally almost all around the world, you know, from here in North America to, to the Portugal, to the UK. I mean, it's all over. But, you know, almost because of that reason, uh, a lot of the music coming out is a much better, at least in my eyes, much better. Sounds a lot better than the mainstream stuff you hear on the radio all the time. Yeah, that's terrible stuff. I can't, I can't, I can't hear top forty stuff. No, um, it's <laughs> overproduced. It's not uh, honest. It's not honest. It's it, it uses all the tricks possible. Uh, the singers only sing the songs. The songs are written by a team of ten or twelve. Uh, I don't know. It's, it's to me, it's not. It's not real music. Uh, I don't consider it real music. It's music. It's something you hear on an elevator on your supermarket. Yeah. <laughs> something like that. <laughs> no, I virtue. You, you never catch me with another top forty either. It just drives me nuts. I can't stand it personally. So, yeah. uh, <laughs> so we're gonna take a. Uh, Quick little break here, and we're gonna to listen to one of your songs. This one's called Good Night, Mr. Frankenstein. Dig this. <laughs> 